hello, it works? Yes? Okay, so let's start because we only have one hour to break GDP. <laughs> Should I close this? All right, so, so this uh, uh, presentation today is about um, how can we actually make GNUPOC to help the toolchain in general. We will see that it's about integrating POC in some of the toolchain components. In particular, the first victims are GDB and the assembler, but we will continue. Um, but also we will see that POC can be used for, with good effect also to other purposes which are related to the project, like helping with documentation, like documenting formats and binary stuff, and also with the testing for generating test data and so on. Um, GNUPOC, I have made so many introductory talks that I can't, I can't do it again anymore. So you have all the resources there. It is a binary editor, but more. Um, some people like it. And um, POC is, uh, is, is growing. As you can see here, um, there is POC the application, which, oops, <laughs> there is POC the application. Um, but there is libpoc, which is what we use, which is basically what implements most of the functionality, the incremental compiler for the POC language, the POC virtual machine, the input output subsystems and whatnot, the binary utilities that people write with POC itself, the pickles, which are the descriptions of formats written in POC, in the POC language. Also, linking to libpoc.so, then you see now the GDB, gas, the gas part is vaporware, as we will see, but it will happen. Uh, the POC daemon. Uh, we are starting writing uh, user interfaces like the Emacs mode, which is a user interface for the, so binary editors, like uh, that people can use directly, other than the command line interface. In Emacs, also graphical user interface and so on, they use uh, the POC daemon, which links with libpoc with the library. So this is the POC sphere, whatever you want to call it. It's rowing, out of control. So what is the plan and the approach of this? The thing is, um, POC is good as, at poking at binary data, describing it and modifying it and reading it and so on. Now, um, this, is tan this is an activity that happens in other activities, like debugging, like doing reverse engineering, like uh, designing new formats, right? Everyone needs a good binary editor from time to time. Now, when it comes to, to, to expansion, um, there are, I think, two, two main approaches. The first one is to make, will be to make POC a debugger, a reverse engineering suite, um, a decompiler, a network analysis tool. But I don't think that's the right approach. This is, by the way, the approach that the POC competitors are all taking, like Radare2, like uh, Kaita Extract, and so on, they try to be everything, right? So instead, we are supporting basic capabilities in POC. For example, with POC, you can actually poke at the memory of a running process, but in a very simple way. You know, if you casually have to do it, you can do it. But if you really want to poke at the memory of a running process, use GDB, don't use POC, because GDB knows about processes. GDB uh, knows about different targets, platforms, whatever. And the same can be said, you know, for the assembler, for the disassembler, for the compilers, and so on. So instead of trying to, to make poke all that that it is not, we basically, we infect those, uh, those, those, uh, those applications with pokeish capabilities, right? That's the approach that we think it's, it, it's better. So here you can see something that I think it's important to know before we get into the integration part. How POC works um, in terms of, uh, of, of, IO, of, of doing IO, right, of, of accessing data. At the top le left, you see the application. It could be the POC command line interface or a graphical user interface or the POC daemon or GDB. No, well, GDB is in the, but yeah, or GDB actually, yes. Um, then you, you issue some POC code that happens to access the whatever file or memory, whatever you are editing. 
So this code, which is written in this domain-specific language, it gets compiled into, um, into PVM, POC Virtual Machine Instructions, right? This PVM is the POC Virtual Machine, which is part of LibPOC, like all that. Um, and those PICPOC instructions actually work on a bit addressable uh, space that you can see down here, you see, um, that is built on top of a, the, the usual byte-oriented space that provides the operating system provides, right? So then the PVM issues uh, works with this bit addressable I.O. object uh, space. Then the I.O. subsystem, which is also part of LibPOC, translates that into byte operations. And the byte operations, which is the underlying device you are editing, like if you are editing a, a binary file or, a, or, a, or memory or, or a socket or whatever, they are implemented by those IODs, IO devices, which could be a file, a memory, a process, like I said, in a very simple way, the process. Uh, and the last one is the foreign support for foreign IO spaces, which is, we will see, what GDB, for example, uses to integrate with LibPog. So when you use POC from within an application like GDB, it goes all the way there and it goes back to you. And that is what you can see here. So we have GDB, right, at the left. And GDB links with libpoc.so. That has, it has the, the POC compiler, the POC virtual machine, and the IO subsystems and everything. Now, GDB registers handlers to be itself one of those IO devices, a foreign IO device. So when you, do, when you, you use pk-execute from GDB, that is one service provided by libpoc, you compile, you evaluate, compile, and execute POC code, and that may result in IO happening, right? In picking or poking. And that com comes back to GDB through callbacks, and this is the way GDB can use POC to poke the memory of the, of the inferior that GDB is debugging. It is very simple, and it works, so what else can you ask for? Now, the, the, the part in the top is the terminal. Also, there are some hooks in libpoc for integration of applications where you define the terminal stuff, right? GDB just prints in using the print unfiltered or print, I don't know, the, the GDB printing internal stuff. So this sort of, this kind of integration achieves the approach for global pokeization, right? Which is GDB is good at what it does, and with POC we are adding something to it, right? Which is a carefully designed domain-specific language for poking at data, painfully designed, right? There is no other programming language that, that, that doing what POC can do, trust me on that. Um, GDB-specific pickles, so that is POC code that is specific to GDB that could be useful, you know, to work in GDB. Actually, well, okay, no, I will not go there. Um, and also general purpose pickles, because debugging a problem is fine, but if your program is, is handling data for which you don't have C type de definitions in DORF or in whatever, then what do you do, right? Imagine that you have a program that has TCP packets in some buffer, and your program has a very simplified or a very superficial or even no uh, type definitions for the contents of the buffer, but still you want to look at that. What do you do? Well, you will need to get that buffer to dump it into a file from GDB, then you will need to, to use some binary editor, some analysis tool, whatever. With this, you just load the TCP pickle, which is a pickle that something someone wrote, wrote already for you, for other purposes most likely, and you can use it from GDB. So you win, and it costs you nothing. Oh, this is not merged yet, but because we have problems, uh, <laughs> but, um, there is a prototype there that you can use if you want to play with all this. So how this looks like? Well, the most basic thing that you can do, well, there is a new command in GDB called poke. Everything you put after this command is poke code, right? Um, you can do simple things like two, two plus three, it works, it gives you five. That's good, I guess. And then, but for example, let's do something more sophisticated. Load. MBR for master boot record, this is loading a pickle that someone wrote, not me, someone, for editing and poking and vandalizing master boot records. So 
then you load it automatically. You have all those definitions available for you. And then this uh, uh, MBR PT brace brace is the syntax for constructing a new poke value. Um, it is constructing one with default values. And the last command here is basically uh, writing a master boot record that you just constructed in that address in the memory of the inferior that you are debugging with GDB. This is the most basic usage, right? However, um, the master boot record types, someone wrote them, for, probably for some other purpose. But when you are debugging something with GDB, most likely you have some debugging for, for it, DORF, CTF, whatever. And you want to look at the data structure that your program actually understands and deals with. So for that, um, this patch includes um, a capability. This is a struct person, this is C, right? So with poke add type struct person, uh, it adds it transforms, translates the GDB types, which it themselves come from DORF or whatever the back format or stabs or whatever. No, stabs no, but okay. Um, into poke types and evaluates them. So this poke dump types tells you all the poke types that has been added to the poke subsystem by this. So for example, this extract it uses this uint16 and some other basic C types. The basic C types, as you see, well, I mean, it is, it is depth first, depth, 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 well, you know what I mean, yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, short and sign int, and then you can see there, you can dump, you know, the poke definitions. Once you do this, you can poke at the same data structures. As you can see, um, the POC one has labels because it, it you know it uh, because of the padding and everything it, it's reflected. It's it's better than the C struct in that sense, right? Ooh. Okay. Um, but also, you know, um, you may say, okay, well, yeah, but I, if, I, if I am using GDB, if I want to dump, if I want to poke poke at, or if I want to work with data, how to find that data? Right? And well, yeah, where is that data? It could be in automatic, so in the stack, it could be in the heap, it could be here or there. So you need a way to actually say, okay, if I have a buffer, if I have a buffer in, in my program, I have a pointer to that buffer somewhere in my program, well, I could just in GDB print that pointer and then copy and paste, nah. So, as you can see here, uh, in the top you have two, two, two global variables in a C program, this counter and this struct person, which is an, uh, a person from the struct type that we saw before. And then, as you can see, if you use a dollar before the name of a POC variable, then it is an alien variable in POC, right? Um, GDB, in the integration with POC, you can also define handlers that are that go to the lexer level. There is a paper coming on this. I call this lexical cuckolding. Um, it injects, so you can actually inject tokens in the poke uh, compiler, right? So for example, here, dollar counter refers to the GDB symbol, or I don't know, how are those things are called in GDB? Variable symbols? Because they are not variables, they are more general. How do you call them? No, no, no. This is not a convenient variable. This is this dollar counter is, is, is it, when you do in GDB you do print counter and counter corresponds to a variable in your program, for example. How do you have variables? Well, whatever. Um, and also you can get the address with dollar address colon colon of any GDB symbol. So, for example, this is used in the example here in the, on the bottom to map. This is a poke mapping. This is pure poke mapping. To map a struct person at the address in the pointer P in your program. You see? So we achieve bidirectional communication here. Um, so this is the GDB integration in terms of uh, how, it, how it works, right? what, what it does. Um, yeah. Now, the next one, the assembler. Um, we have a problem with the assembler, which is that there is no way, there are not, we don't have portable data directives. 
And this is something that maybe not everyone realizes, but it's a problem that exists, and it is a bad problem. And you find this kind of problem when you try to do things like, for example, generating CTF or DORF or whatever for every target, you know? Uh, it does not work. It does not work unless you... So, um, basically, this integration that I am proposing here, which is not done already, I have some, something, but it's not quite working because uh, have problems with the frags, and as you can imagine, um, is that to add a new data directive called .poke to the assembler, in which you can actually introduce, uh, write any poke expression, and the same way that in GDB, uh, it picks and pokes from the inferior memory, right? When it, in the same way in gas, when you write to it, it will actually add fragments to whatever will be emitted at the end in the second pass of the assembly. So instead of, yes, do you have the microphone? I don't know where the microphone is. The, micro, uh, the microphone is. Disassembler. No, I like your idea, uh, Jose, but I would like to have it also for disassembler. Okay, I'm, inter so I'm interested. So when I disassemble the text, I want to see the same thing with the poke expression and the same, uh, the same uh, uh, variables there, nicely layout. Okay, so you assembly this? I assembly the one which you wrote down. Yeah. And I want to, when, this, when I disassemble, I want to see the same thing. Can, is possible? I, I can't see why that would be possible with, uh, unless you actually uh, include those strings in the, in the object of file somehow. Of course, we need a, a special section, I think, yeah. I guess it could be possible, yeah. but is this not a general thing? I mean, there are so many things that get lost, right, when you assemble something to binary. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, yeah because I see a lot of uh, uh, um, potential here. Uh, what I think is that the code at the top, believe it or not, is not portable, right? Which sucks, and it's surprising, but that's how it is. And also, I don't know, I mean, it's, I think this is much more readable, <laughs> to be honest. Particularly because if you change in that pickle PSXX that does not exist, this is something, this is an example, I don't remember where I got it, but the, the, the stuff at the top is, is something that people actually do. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's done. Um, well, uh, it's, it's obvious what are the advantages of doing it, like in the bottom, right? So. In the case of gas, the alien tokens, like this dollar main, will refer to the gas symbol with the same name, right? So if you have full colon before this, then you can refer to it as an offset of bytes, you know, uh, in your poke code. So this is what I propose to do for the assembler. We will have discussion later, actually I'm going fast because so we can discuss later. Or do you have any comment? Yeah, I was going to like, what's the advantage of this compared to, say, using a separate poke invocation and then using ink, ink pin, but now I see that you have access to the symbols. And yeah, of course, like of course, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, actually, probably it will excite you more if instead of this PSXX that I think that people hacking uh, video games stuff use, imagine that this is, for example, a dwarf die that you want to put to assembly for a test. We will talk, see more about this uh, a bit, little bit later. Yeah. Anyway, this is the, the gas integration that I am proposing. But POC can be used for other things too. For example, documentation. Um, recently, we have been designing a Dora called the support for the CTF frame format, which Indu designed. She's there, and she's the. She's the, the, the mastermind behind CTF Frame. And while doing it, uh, we, we have seen that it is very useful to actually, as you are developing the format, 
In this case, it's a format for stack, stack back tracing, the stack tracing, and she will be talking about it here in Plumbers. Uh, in Plumbers, you know, I'm so sorry. In Cauldron, um, it is useful to document it using pickles. So this is, for example, the POC definition for um, uh, an entity in CTF, which is the CTF info thing. Because it is easy to read, it is totally and completely not ambiguous, it is designed to not be ambiguous. By looking at those few lines, you can tell, for example, that CTF info is 32 bits long, that it has three fields inside it, that they are, those fields are to be interpreted as unsigned values, the first one is six bits, the second one is one bit, the third one is 25. And also, since this is an integral struct, which is a concept in the POC language, you know that this struct should be stored in the same way that an integral value of 32 bits gets stored, including NDNS and byte ordering and whatnot. And all of that is in this simple definition. You know, it is very simple. Another advantage, you can create prototypes super fast with this. For example, uh, before uh, we added support for, C for dumping CTF uh, uh, in object dumping vinutils, that you have to edit in C, you have to blah, 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 blah. You can write a pickle CTF dump that uses the CTF pickle uh, in what? In literally in, 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 uh, in one hour you can write it. It's very fast, you know, I mean, and execute it. So it pays back, that's my point, to actually document your format using POC. Mm. Um, now, the question I have now for the community, can we actually create a pickles directory in Binutils GDB? Because at least we are maintaining two formats in the sense that the implementation in Binutils, which is CTF and CTF frame, the implementation in Binutils is the authoritative uh, implementation, so to say. Right now we have them in POC, the, the POC distribution, like POC the program, but maybe it will be good to move them to Binutils. Um, and finally, um, POC can be also used for testing. And this is something that my colleague Mohammed, who is in Zoom, in five minutes he will actually show you how, uh, an example of this. Um, so, right now we have test suites in the assembler and in the linker that either ship raw binary data for the expected values, right? That's the typical example. It does not have to be encoded in binary. It can be an S record, it can be, you know, but it's the same thing. It's maybe more convenient for Git and for diffs, and, but a diff of an S rec file is not that, uh, <laughs> that useful as it could be, right? Um, also, we have the problem in those, uh, in those test suites. Sometimes you have raw data because you cannot rely on the assembler data directives to always behave the same in any target. Because you could say, okay, we can use dot war, dot by, dot whatever to encode dwarf, for example, in some test. It will not work, right? So that's not good. Um, sometimes people like me are lazy and then you involve the compiler. So, for example, if you want to add tests for, for dwarf or for CTF or so, for something that the compiler happens to generate, then you put there the C files. Yeah, we all do this, right? You put there the C file, and then you put rules to generate the .s or the, or the .o, and then you use it. But this is not a good thing, because we are not testing GCC, right? So if we want to be a strict, we should not have in the assembler, you know, uh, or in the linker uh, test suite, in my opinion, eh, I don't think we should have a C programs built with GCC like that. So. If we had pickles for dwarf, and actually we have, I wrote them, they are part of the POC distribution. If we have pickles for dwarf, if we have pickles for CTF and for CTF frame, if we have pickles for the, for the formats that we want to test, why not using them to generate that test data? Right? In a way that is portable and blah, 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 blah. So um, now my friend Mohammed, who is also, a, he works in POC too, He's gonna show it around here. Uh, okay, and now I have to do something. Let me see if I can do it right. I will try. Um, Mohammed, are you there? Manifest yourself. Yes, I'm here. Cool. Okay, so I have to put this in Zoom. 
Uh -huh. And then I have to put this in PC1. Yeah. Can you share your screen? Uh, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, do you see something? Uh, uh oh. Let me do it again. It's the other two. Oh, there it is. No, no, I just <laughs> disabled it. Okay, again. Do you have it? Ah, it's there. It's there. There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got, we got you. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, in this part of talk, I'm going to uh, talk about how can we use uh, GNU Poke as a tool for testing the tool chain itself. Uh, my case study is RISC V uh, RB32 I base integer instruction set to see uh, to see what Poke can do for it. Uh, this is just an example. You can imagine other architectures. It's just uh, I chose it because it's simple and easy to understand and show it. Okay, Poke can be useful for documentation. You can uh, the Risk Five instruction set is extensible, so you can document your extensions, uh, and it, it's a very intelligent kind of documentation because it, it runs its code. You can uh, run, you can generate test data, you can generate uh, stuff for your assembler, for disassembler, for your extensions, and things like that. You can use it for testing. Uh, you can generate valid or invalid ELF files or uh, instruction uh, instructions because uh, Poke understands ELF. It understands uh, the instruction set. You can do whatever you want to do, and uh, it, use, it is useful also for debugging uh, because, uh, as I said recently, Poke is. Uh, uh, it knows about the L file. You can use it as an assembler or linker or whatever to uh, create some something and then feed it to your uh, something in the tool chain and see if it works or not. And because it uh, it has a fully programming language itself, so you can do analysis and statistics. You can look at your uh, generated code and uh, look at the uh, register allocation. You can read. You can. Uh, investigate your jumps, you can do analysis, it's, it's up to you. And there are more. Okay, what kind of tests? Uh, for gas, I, as I told you, you can generate some stuff and see if uh, poke and gas can agree on something. Uh, in GCC, we can ask questions like, are all jumps PC relative? You, you, uh, you expect that, okay, now GCC should emit codes that are all PC relative or something like that, or you are so uh, we will searching for interrupt you for okay. a brief moment. We got a uh, we have a problem problem with the YouTube. Apparently, people on YouTube don't see anything. Uh, this one. Okay, but it is Zoom. It says Zoom, so they should see. All right. So the thing that we thought thought was wrong is actually not wrong. So we will probably just let you <laughs> continue. Good. Uh, just Can I continue or I have just to wait? Just to... Yeah. We, yeah, apparently we, we didn't manage to fix it. So sorry for, pe yeah, we, our apologies to people on uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, I, you can continue. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you're you're uh, searching for some specific sequence of instructions. You want you expect GCC to uh, emit those kind of uh, patterns, or you expect to not emit those kind of patterns, and you can test them using uh, poke. And uh, you can ask elf related questions, uh, sections, and stuff that is inside them, and etc. It's up to you. Now, let's focus on RISC-V pickle. In uh, what is a pickle? In GNU poke terminology, we call pickle a logical component that provides a set of related functionality. The, the RISC-V stuff, instruction no. set stuff, is, uh, is there any problem or? But it's okay. okay. It's okay. We, we can okay. see it, we just don't have it on the screen. Sorry, go on. Okay, okay. Okay, the, uh, this, uh, uh, the types, functions, and variables related to RISC-V instruction set are defined in RISC-V or RISC-V.pk file. 
and it uh, currently only supports the RV32i instruction sets, and uh, in which all the instructions are 32 bit bits, and we have 32 registers uh, of uh, with 32 bit. Uh, so, so the most important type inside this pickle is RV32 instant, which is a union. You can see, uh, and as like C unions. Uh, at the time, only one field can be active, R, I, S, P, U, J. And uh, we have six fields because there are six types of instruction formats in the RISC file. And so let's uh, look at a few uh, types of instructions in the RISC file. Okay, this is an R type instruction. Uh, it is uh, useful for register, register uh, functionalities. Uh, it's a 32-bit number. We have a 7-bit uh, on the uh, on the most significant part, and then RS2 uh, register source two and register source one. A function three-bit functionality, and destination register, and opcode, which is seven bits. Uh, here is the uh, poke description of uh, this specification. Okay, we are defining a type here, which is uh, integral struct. It's not a struct. It is an integer, unsigned integer of bits 32, in which we want to group bits and give them names. Like here, uh, we have a uint7 funct7 and uint5 for registers and stuff. And you can see that we have uh, weird uh, uh, integers in the in the book. And one uh, thing here is that uh, we call them here uh, uh, constraints. You are constraining this uh, to you accept this as an R type instruction if and only if the O code is in, in this array, which is a set of all valid uh, of codes which belongs to this family of instructions. And uh, Union uh, uses this uh, constraint to actually find out which uh, field should it select. And uh, because of some working with these raw things like uh, QIN75 uh, is not very uh, user friendly. We can define type aliases or IV, RV font 7 reg and R, R code and so on. Uh, here is the uh, I type instruction. Uh, we have a, a register, an immediate, which is a 12 bit integer, signed integer, and a destination register and off code. And you see that uh, it's very uh, there is a direct correspondence between the description and the specification. Uh, here, I want to uh, show you, I'm adding another uh, constraint here. You can add as many as you want. Uh, this is the uh, operation uh, logical implication. If opcode is uh, jump and link register, then functionality three should be zero. You can uh, restrict your uh, definition of types and, and make it more restrict uh, if you want. Okay, this is the S type. Uh, here, uh, the immediate is divided into two parts. Here, the upper part and the, the uh, lower part. And we see here and here. So we need, uh, we are adding uh, here a get im method because it's a synthesized field. We use the get underscore prefix. It's a convention in the POP community. Here I'm concatenating, bit con uh, concatenating these two integers, bit concatenating, and cast them as integer 32 bit and shift them to sign to extend the sign. And there are other BUJ uh, formats which uh, I will not talk about. Now let's uh, instantiate an I type instruction. Okay, uh, here I'm using add I, uh, which is add uh, this uh, immediate to this instruction to this register and put the result in the X10 register. Okay? Uh, this is the format for uh, I type instructions. And here's the value we expect to put in, in those fields. And this is the uh, instantiation of this uh, RB32 instrument I in poke, which is fairly uh, readable. Okay. And we can put uh, put it into inside an RV, uh, the, the, our union, the, the only type yet, and uh, we can active the I uh, field. But it's rare boots, we can use helper function. This is the syntax uh, for calling, it's alternative syntax for calling uh, 
uh, functions with uh, parameters, uh, with named parameters. You can see here we can use, um, uh, it is all, these are all defined in the risk.pk uh, file. Or you can use the old, old school uh, function called syntax. Uh, here I can uh, create uh, an instruction and put it into a variable. And I can print it. I, there are two uh, useful uh, methods for all of this instruction, as as and as poke, which generates um, assembly representation of the instruction and poke representation of the as, uh, instruction. These are very useful for generating. This. So here um, I have three win uh, three windows here. This uh, uh, left top window is my input. This is my pokelet for. In, uh, inserting data, communicating with the poke D. The uh, right top is the output, and uh, the, the bottom one is the presentation. Okay. Um, here I can write my poke code I0 uh, RV32 at I RD10 RS110 and, or 11 and immediate 42. Here in my REPL, uh, uh, Jose uses Emacs interface. He uses a different uh, convention. But here in my REPL, I uh, use this convention that if a command starts with semicolon, it means that uh, show this uh, the value of this uh, expression in the output. You can here see that it's a uh, I form uh, I format instruction, and you can see the fields that are here. Uh, we can call other like printf the instruction. We can see what's going on. Yes, uh, it prints it on a single line. You can add, tell the print to use tree mode. It generates this output. You can see here, and uh, the uh, i zero dot as as it creates the textual representation in, in assembly. And we can, have, as poke, this syntax, exactly the thing that we use to create this instruction. And we also support the other uh, syntax. This is These are useful to generating text files, which contains, um, uh, which will generate our test cases for our thing. And uh, here, if you see, uh, I'm uh, creating a bunch of um, assembly strings. This is an um, array of string. I'm uh, I'm covering all the possible immediates, and I'm generating the instruction, uh, and then uh, changing to a string and put it into this thing. Uh, we can actually run this, and uh, here now I can uh, as code. This is. And, and we can it's, uh, we can get the length of an array and so on. Um, also, there is a point that this uh, I uh, zero is a union, as you already saw, and the active field is I. It shows the thing. If you uh, use other uh, field, it will give you an error and uh, uh, an exception that the the field you're trying to access is not uh, active. And this uh, I zero is a is a struct uh, is a integral struct. So you can use it. Uh, you can be it behaves like an integer. If I put a unary plus in front of it, it will give me the number. This is the machine code, the thirty two bit machine code. That uh, if you want to uh, make it more beautiful, you can change the uh, base to sixteen and see this thing. The nice thing about poke is that you can use these uh, numbers and cast them to uh, instant font i, cast them to in, uh, integral structs. Uh, the only problem is here is that you cannot do it for the instant because it's a union. For that, you have to do uh, map, memory mapping stuff. You can see here, I will not go into them uh, now. Let's uh, test the guess. Okay. Uh, here I'm creating a bunch of instructions. 
and I am and this is an array of 32 bits uh, instructions okay and uh, let me check everything is okay yes uh, and here I'm uh, creating MEDS from uh, I'm, I'm using this uh, for loop you can see okay I can select this and execute it now I have these instructions lengths it's an okay I can change the base to 10 and see the length it's 80 it's which is exactly what I would expect so we have we can uh, look at the instructions zero this is the instructions we can write okay that's okay in this part I'm going to create a file like test zero one the bin which I will copy all my generated instructions into this file okay let's uh, okay now if I go here I see this test one that bin file if I do hex dump I see that it's a uh, binary file but the nice thing is that you can use object dump to actually dump uh, this assemble this uh, I save the array of instructions and I'm using object dump to disassemble it and here you see that li load immediate is a pseudo instruction it's an uh, synonym for add i t6 0 23 okay now let's move on to the next part um, now I want to create uh, an assembly file okay I'm looping over my instructions and putting the strings there and put a, a, a new line at the end of each line okay let's run this code okay now if I come here I have a test uh, one but if I open that it's a normal thing I can actually compile this fun uh, using the assembler okay risk b 32 elf s with this uh, machines and I'm creating a test dot elf file okay here we have it um, and then I'm uh, copying the dot text section of my L file into this file dot L dot bin, and I want to show you that both of these files have the same uh, length, and also they are the same file. The I the the gas generated exactly the instructions I expected I, I generated using the poke you can see here if there is a difference here so there's a bug either in poke or in gas um, next one okay I just showed you that you can use uh, uh, no you can use a uh, uh, Opt two to think that, and uh, in the beginning of my talk, I told you that Elf on uh, poke understands it. So here I'm uh, loading the Elf pickle, and then I'm opening this, uh, this Elf file which I generated using the, uh, and I'm interpreted as a Elf uh, thirty two file uh, from this IO space at this offset. I'm getting the text section, get text sections by name, and uh, because there's only one uh, section, I get this first one. So if I go here you see that uh, e text is it actually a elf uh, 32 shr which uh, i can extract the offset and size of this section and uh, let me here i can save this into these variables okay now i i can use text off and size okay and uh, here I can get the instructions from uh, the file, L file inside it. I'm telling Poke that, okay, give me an array of this size. I'm bounding the array using the size uh, of this kind of instruction and uh, at this offset. And because I just instructions, lengths, 
it's it's, it's AD, uh, and I can verify that okay, these instructions is what I generated in the for loop in poke and e inst instructions is what I I'm reading from the L file, and the result is e one means that they are equal and everything is good, and. Uh, uh, I want to talk about bug against and showing Steve, which is a structured diff, because uh, Poke knows about the structure of binaries. It can generate more useful information and differences uh, at this stru uh, structure level. But because uh, we don't have en enough time, we want some discussion. So I have to tell you thank you. And uh, if you have any question, you can ask. Thank you again. Well, I have one question. Okay. Is it me or you turn poke into a into a presentation tool? <laughs> I'm, uh, my my presentation I'm tool is actually uh, is is actually poke code running. I just wrote a simple uh, poke uh, pokelet which shows these things inside the poke. It's it's okay. completely okay. poke. Yes, it's very fun. Yes. I want to show the power of poke to people to believe that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna remove this Git repository as soon as the talk finishes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. So now it's time for questions. Thank you, Mohammed. It was very interesting. So basically, sorry, just to finish, the something like this is what we will be suggesting to actually uh, introduce in the test suites in Binutils for things like instruction sets, like you saw with RISC-5, but also for DORF, for other formats and so on. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Matt, thank you very much. This has been an eye-opener and uh, nicely timed because in 10 minutes time, you can hear the lightning talk about, about testing the ZC star extension for RISC-5. <laughs> um, and this would have made it a lot easier because there are hundreds of tests. And I think yes. what I, my concern is this is another test infrastructure, and I think mm -hmm. if you could take this infrastructure and actually use it to generate existing in, within the existing uh, test framework, so I can just run mm -hmm. make check GAN. Would really be helpful. I mean, we've created something like 500 separate GAS tests, I seem to recall, for ZC Star because it is. 10 different sub extensions with dependencies depending yes. on which other extensions and so forth. I think great to see it done for varv 32i. I think it comes into its own when you start to see some of the new extensions coming out there. So it's really mm -hmm. good. Yes, it's also the good thing is that you can also document your extensions and it is there. If, if, and you can use, as you already saw, are using uh, uh, for loops to generate uh, more instructions. You can do it for your extensions and it did it, work. It, 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 it's very nice tool, I guess. Yes. Hey, so I have. Hey, my question is: uh, You said that you see the poke po pickle format used as a documentation tool. Not or really. Like as that a, you can use it for, for documentation. As a way to document, and, yeah, this kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah. In this area, I know Kaita is tracked. I don't know if you know about the project, which yes, also uses something a little bit similar. So. Is there a tool to maybe convert between the formats to use one or another, um, whenever you want? Or? Okay. Um, well, KTA Extract is a project that is used very widely used for generating encoders and decoders of, of, of all sorts of formats, right? And uh, Poke, the editor, is actually something else in that, that sense. We are not competing with KTA Extracts. Why I'm saying this? Because when you write the binary, there is not one description of a binary format or a binary struct for everything. If you write a Kaita struct description of a, of a binary format, you are writing it to generate encoders and decoders in C or in C++ or whatever. When you write a pickle in poke, for using it with the poke editor, you are writing the description in order to use it interactively and immediately, you know, also you can write programs as you can see, but you write it differently 
because you are not a C program, you are not a C parser, you know, and you are, so um, the way you write your data structures, there are many descriptions for the same structure, that's the thing, that's my point. Now, for documenting a binary format, um, you could use high tie struct descriptions, but my feeling is that if you do that for documentation purposes, the description you come up with is probably not the one that you want to use for generating parsers with it. You see what I mean? But yeah, yeah, sure, there are many ways of achieving the same thing. Yeah. Also, the POC, test, the POC language is way better than what they use. For sure. Uh, I don't know if this is a good idea, but an idea possibly is would be GCC using poke. So in terms of we're spitting out a .s assembler file, and right now we're um, we're omitting things the assembler understands, and you've basically expanded the world of what the assembler understands. Should we go a bit higher level in the assembly, or have an option to go a higher level in the assembly that we generate? Or like, for example, emitting the dwarf sections as, um, well, I mean, we put comments in already, I think, that documenting what the dwarf looks like. But uh, do you see what I mean, that we? Uh, not really. I mean, do no. you want GCC to generate the, the POC description of the data that it generates as well? Possibly, yeah. Like, for, for various constructs that we generate, which rather than, yeah. Maybe it's not a good idea, but it's an idea. <laughs> but those are the best. <laughs> Yeah. The Plan 9 uh, project, uh, the compiler uh, generates this kind of data, data structure for their ACID debugger, which is a uh, GDB plus POC is kind of some ACID. So uh, you can, there is ex at least one example in the history. Yeah, yeah, but, but Muhammad, wait, 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 but, wait. but uh, we are going very fast down the hill of generating yes, executable yes, yes. POC code so the debugger executes it, right? No, no, I like this, that we have GDB, so it's, it's better for us to use GDB to generate these kind of things. And we don't need the compiler to do these kind of things. But uh, there wasn't, I just wanted to tell that there was an example in the history that uh, the compiler generates some file for this debugger, the ACID debugger in the, in the Plan 9 project. Okay, so is Nick here? Ah, he told me he was going to be here. Okay, then, the, then, he, then that means yes, right? <laughs> so the GDB people, what do you think about this? What's, what, what, what are your feelings? Simon, Pedro? I mean, now we have a problem, which is that the, the, POC, the POC compiler, we are using the Bohem garbage collector, or I would say the Bohem not collector. Um, and Guy is using the same one. So we can't compile GDB with support for both Guile and Poke because then it's a mess. Uh, but we are replacing it with an ad hoc uh, moving garbage collector in Poke that will, should be ready soon. Sounds very nice. Uh, and the integration doesn't affect anything else. And no, it's it, is, it is contained. Look, it is contained. I knew you would come with that. <laughs> um, GDB, Poke.c. Here, it's all in here. Right, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, it seems very interesting. Uh, even though it, it creates like two languages in GDB, so you would have to learn something else. But um, people learn it, and then it's okay. Uh, uh, I like that you you're creating these bridges between data structures and like the symbols in GDB. You can export them back and forth. So I, I, I haven't played with this yet, so I I don't have a feeling for how. It, how convenient it is to use, hmm. but uh, I like what I've seen so far. And the uh, I'll just another comment is like everyone in this row commented <laughs> it as you were showing the, the dwarf idea of the testing dwarf things. We do have something like that already in GDB. I'm, I think you know it. Hmm. Uh, we we have our own. We call it dwarf assembler. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. it's written in Tickle. Um, and the idea of replacing that with Poke is, it seems viable. Uh, even though I, I think it would need more than just uh, we do we do things like uh, compile the program and then extract uh, the addresses of, of symbols, the size of functions, and then regenerate things with those constants. 
uh, but it seems doable in Pocket because it's a programming language. Uh, I'll be interested to see whatever you come up with testing Dwarf uh, on the Binutil side and see if we can end up with something that's shared with GDB, even though what we have does work. We already. will probably start with CTF. I, I didn't catch that. That we will most likely start with CTF for testing CTF and CTF frame as well. Um, that, that, those are my comments. I don't know. If other no, yeah, but you know, as a, the first examples of using POC for testing. Uh, got it, yeah. Oh. The only thing I noticed in the example where you're in GB, you assign the, you had a memory address and, and assign the person to the memory address. And it's really just because I talked about this this morning is eventually maybe GB will be able to uh, refer to different memory spaces uh, using that syntax I showed this morning. So, and now this address, I guess, was in POKE syntax, so. No, no, actually not. I mean, the, 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 the you can, in, in the alien token, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I was gonna switch to the scratch buffer, but I will not because you never know what, it, what, it, what you can, will find there. So here, so um, like for example, this thing, Right? You have here address and foo. I, I think you had a, like a literal 0x and hexadecimal address and then you assign said so like I want to. Ah yeah, but that is POC syntax. Yeah. Yes. So you don't like I, the POC I was wondering syntax. if we could integrate like the, the POC language more into the like GDB, like do like set variable, like have a set then an expression equals and then like a POC expression after that so that the POC Language is more integrated into GDB's expression. Oh, uh, I see. But that would be a lot more complex. But mm, be uh, easily done if you can add convenience functions like yeah. dollar poke, and then pass it the string. The, the only reason the, poke. the only reason the integration is just is using those ugly looking poke and poke add types uh, interface is because of my own uh, incompetence, which is blatant and well known. My point is that, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I did it this way because for me it was the fastest way, you know, of integrating. But of course, is there are better ways, like integrating evaluation of POC expressions into GDB expressions? Awesome, yeah. And regarding the problem of having two programming languages in GDB, you can remove the Python and use POC. It's a very good option, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, but no, but the uh, thing is that uh, I know that GDB is, is it's, Python nowadays is your language of choice for extending GDB, right? I personally would prefer C, but okay, it, Python it is. Yeah. But POC it does not intend to be an, ex an extension language for GDB, not at all. And actually POC is not a general purpose programming language. And I will resist, personally resist with violence any attempt to actually use POC for anything that is not its domain-specific uh, domain, right? Yeah. Uh, you, men you mentioned Python, and I was about to ask, um, is there a Python extension module so that people writing Python scripts and that, that whole ecosystem of development, I guess, the, uh, you know, are there language bindings for POC so that POC's speciality seems to be, here's a binary layout, so like a way of like... That's where the magic is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so is, are there libpoke bindings for Python, for, I guess, Rust, Ruby? Uh, I have like no that, idea. So that people can, in those languages, can reuse your binary layout descriptions. I don't know if there, is a, if there are libpoke bindings, uh -huh. but if what you are thinking is actually to do, to do poke in Python, I don't think that's going to work. I mean, we, we are not using a domain-specific language for, for the pure pleasure of it. It's fun too, but, um, but yeah, I don't know if there are Python bindings. Mohamed, you don't know? Do you know? No, no, I don't no. think. You can use PokeD. It's a better approach than using yeah. Poke if, if for other languages. Okay. We, yeah, yeah, we have to go. Thank you very much. Mohamed. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jose.